Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, very warm welcome to our Together service today. It's been lovely to, to have the bacon. So a big thank you to, uh, to Nicola and to Hayley for stepping in to our summertime gap to do the, the bacon. Because it is summertime. Many of our folk are away today. But it's, uh, it's lovely to see you here as we gather together to worship God this morning. A prayer as we start. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the precious blessing it is to meet together, to worship you and to share fellowship. And we pray that you'd bless our time together, that you'd speak to us clearly, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's sing our first hymn this morning, Jesus is the name we honour. Thank you. 
Well, do please be seated. So we have our together question, our question to talk about around your tables this morning. And this is the question for today. Is there anything that you started but didn't finish? What was it and what stopped you? So something you started and didn't finish, what it was and what stopped you? Off you go. <laughs> Well, I think we've had long enough to, uh, to share our stories, so I'm going to come around and, uh, and see what things you started and didn't finish. So I can see there's a bacon roll that's been started and not finished on this table. Good, that's, that's scandalous, that is. Apart, oh, the bacon's gone, <laughs> the best bit. Um, so then on this table, apart from the bacon roll, what other things of unfinished tasks do you want to share? Well, I've always admired people who can crochet, so I did buy myself a crochet starter kit. I had a go, couldn't do it, and gave up and put it back in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that may be a familiar story. <laughs> right, this table, what about your unfinished table? Bernie. Um, 15 years ago, I started a, a well, it's like cross, cross stitch, but it's called black work, and it was footsteps in the stand. I got as far as stitching foot. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, you, the message of the poem yeah, went deep. On the to do's. <laughs> well, we seem to have a strong theme of, uh, of craft. What actually stopped you? Because that's the second part of the thing. So Nicola couldn't do it and didn't have the time. What stopped you, Bern? Um, well, down each side of the, um, the cross stitch, it, it was like a, a sort of a, a beach. And um, all, I got all the cottons muddled up at the back. I, got, I think I got yellow sea. 
I've got blue sand. <laughs> and I can never understand if, if, why people can cross stitch and not look at the pattern all the time. I, I really, really did make a holics of it. <laughs> so, so skill then was the issue. <laughs> Right, what about this tale? John's. John's? Oh, well, I, I just said that I started a bottle of wine last night and fell, <laughs> fell asleep halfway through, so I didn't quite finish that. So it was weariness that stopped you from completing the task of finishing the bottle of wine. <laughs> And I said to John when I heard that as I was walking around, it's like those, those memes that you, that you get about um, recipes to use leftover wine and somebody going, leftover wine? <laughs> <laughs> right, this, <laughs> this table. Char. Um, so my daughter's now 33 and I started a cross stitch. When she was, we were rained out on a, uh, a beach holiday and a camping te tent and I got rained out, I bought a cross stitch pattern and I, yeah, she was 15 months old then, and I still haven't finished it. Because <laughs> I had three kids, and that was, yeah. So, so time, time, time was the issue. Yeah, she's already <laughs> Come on, mate, what are you saying? No, it just comes to mind, Beethoven's Unfinished Symphony. Beethoven's Unfinished Symphony, so that's very cultural and... No, uh, I think we've discovered that the good folk of St Peter's, while many are gifted in the, uh, in the arts and crafts, <laughs> there are several who are not. <laughs> and I would, I would include myself in, in, in that. I was um, sorting out some bags in the loft not so long ago and I found my knitting bag with, yeah, with a half-knitted jumper in it, yeah. <laughs> which probably dated from... Well, I've been here 10 years, so I, it hasn't been out of the loft in that time. <laughs> Who knows how long ago. Oh, do you know, sometimes we do struggle, don't we? Sometimes it's because we haven't got the skill, like Byrne, got all the wires crossed, and, uh, you know, there can be metaphorical ways of doing that as well. Sometimes we don't finish things because we get distracted. You know, I had three children, or I'm, I'm, I'm a working one with a busy job and church commitment, you know? we get kind of swamped in by all of the different commitments. And it doesn't really matter at the end of the day whether we finish that cross stitch. You know, it's neither here nor there. But if we're distracted away from Jesus, that's where things start to get a little bit dangerous, as we'll see. But before we get on to that, we've got a little task. Now, I'm going to bring some pictures around. So Rihanna's going to put them up on the thing but I'm going to give them to you so you can see them more closely um, and I want you to spot the fake from the genuine in these pictures so I'll bring you them round to your table as well so you can see them a bit more closely so the super table
Righty ho, let's find out what you think. So uh, we're going to go across the images from left to right. I didn't number them this time because it's a faff to put the numbers on and the pictures. Um, but let's let's go from uh, from left to right across the top. So the first picture, real or fake? Real. Real. It is real. And Nicola knows where it is. Can you remember? You've seen it in the news. No, it's Lake Hillier in Australia, and it's the uh, it's the salts in the water combined with the uh, energy emitted by the microalgae Dunaliella salina. Apparently, oh yeah, that's that's what that one's about. <laughs> I wouldn't swim in it. No. <laughs> yes, I think I would. Uh, I think when I read more about it, yes. <laughs> So looks pretty, but don't don't have a Barbie moment because of the pink and dive into it. I think <laughs> number two, real or fake? It's real. So we're going from left to right. So it's the stone. Um, yeah, apparently it, it, big stones can move across the the ground because what happens is they get encased in ice. And, and when the rains come and there's, there's a, a layer of water and they're encased in ice, the buoyancy carries them along. And as the, as the water goes and the ice melts, it sort of produces a trail after it. So really big boulders can skate across the surface of the ground. And uh, Heather's seen a documentary on that, so there you go. <laughs> Number three. Real. Real, yeah. Snow chimneys in Antarctica. So it's the hot steam from underneath the surface pushing its way out, forming a, a thing. Right, number four, the rainbows. Well, this is a bit of a trick one, because you do get these in reality, but, um, but these ones are actually um, a, a computer simulation. They, they made it, it's the University of California have done this computer simulation to better understand the physics behind the natural phenomenon. So, so that one is a bit of a trick one because you can get rainbows like that. You remember a couple of months ago we had different yeah. rainbows, but that picture, that, that's a computer simulation. Okay, that was a bit of a trick one. Number five, middle one. Real, it is a volcano. It's the blue volcano in Indonesia. And it's the, the high quantities of the sulfuric gas in extreme pressures that dazzle as blue rather than red. Number six. Real? Anybody know where it is? It's not Japan. It's the Forest of Knives in Madagascar. It's uh, limestone. Number seven. The multicoloured, multicoloured river. It is real, and it is, and it's, it's, well, it's, it's, this is Colombia, this particular one, but they, I suspect they probably have them elsewhere, and it's a moss-like growth that for most of the year is just dark green, but when the rainy season comes, then different sunlight and all the rest of it, it erupts in different colours through the river, so how beautiful is that? Number eight. It's real. Lenticular clouds above Mount Fuji in Japan. Absolutely real. Oh, we are yeah, known as pancake clouds as well. Often, um, sort of, they they come in different shapes. Sometimes they can be mistaken for flying saucers, UFOs, the report, UFO reports, because they can look like UFOs. So there we are. And the last one. It is real. It's not the Northern Lights. It's light pillars in Canada. It's ice crystals that are suspended in the air when it's really, 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 really cold. And uh, the different lights from the ground refracting through those ice crystals in the air. So there we go. Well, I'm glad it's created a wow because, you know, there are so many things that make us go wow in the world that God has made. There's so many amazing phenomena, some so amazing that we might think that can't possibly be real. That's got to be a fake. 
because it's so amazing and mind-blowing. Sometimes we struggle to believe what we see. Our Bible reading today is all about Jesus doing something in nature, which we might think, oh my goodness, that's so amazing. It's got to be impossible or a fake, but was in fact absolutely real. So I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 14, and this is where we are today. Matthew chapter 14, I'm going to read a few verses now and a few later on. It's on page 900. And 81, page 981. And I'm going to read verses 22 to 27. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. So Jesus has just fed more than 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fish. And straight away after that, he orders the disciples to get into a fishing boat and go to the other side of the lake while he sorts out all of the crowds. While the disciples do as they're told, but it's not an easy sailing. The wind has picked up and the boat is buffeted by the waves. And to add to the hassle, they are sailing through the night. Jesus, on the other hand, has now gone up on a mountainside to pray. Because Jesus was never afraid to stop. Even in the busyness of his ministry, he stopped and he prayed. And there's a great lesson in there for us, you know. We often complain that our busy lives push out so many things, but especially they push out prayer. But it's exactly when we are busy and hard pressed that we need to pray. Jesus had just done this immense miracle and he needed to talk to his father. And so do we. Anyway, once Jesus has spent this time in prayer on the mountainside, he goes back to the shore and the boat is far in the distance now. So Jesus decides to walk to it. I love the casual sound of verse 25. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. He makes it sound so easy, doesn't he? Of course it's not easy no one can walk on top of the water so one winter's walk before lockdown I wished I could uh, it was the January before lockdown and uh, my family had met up with my friend Lisa and her family to go on a winter walk in Cheshire it was the Cheshire countryside it was beautiful but it had been raining for quite a few weeks the ground was very boggy beneath anyway we dutifully followed our map you know you go across the next stile, across another field, take another stile, you know, the type of thing on these walking mats. Um, and then we got to the next instruction. Cross the field to the stile on the other side. Well, we got sort of, I don't know, three quarters of the way across the field. We could see the stile, but between us and the stile was a massive, big, muddy puddle. And we looked to the side of it, no, nope, we can't really get round the side. Let's see the other side. No, nope, we can't really get round the side. It was a bit like, um, you know, we're going on a bear hunt. We can't, we can't go round it. We can't go through it. There were a few sort of tempting looking clumps of grass in it, you know, <laughs> a few little stones. Uh, so anyway, one by one, we sort of tentatively went across. And then it was my turn. And I'm looking at this water. I'm looking at my walking boots. I'm thinking, oh, no deep breath 
of course, my foot went right through the water. The muddy water poured in the top of my walking boots. It was yuck. It was really yuck. But it was a walk we remembered. Naomi started laughing as soon as she realised which story I was telling. Because, of course, you know, I can't walk on water no matter how much I want to. But Jesus, on the other hand, could because Jesus can control the laws of nature. Now, I love Star Trek, as many of you know. I've been re-watching the original series while I'm cooking the, the dinner at the moment. And there are many catchphrases in Star Trek. If you're not a Trekkie, I bet you even know some of the, the catchphrases anyway. But Scotty has one of the best ones. And we're just going to play a little clip um, this morning. Real is just going to set it up. For us of, uh, of, of Scotty, <laughs> um, one of his one of his classic uh, catchphrases. You might catch me using one of the catchphrases. The uh, the doctor has got a great one. I'm uh, I'm a doctor, not a dot dot dot. You know, I'm a doctor, not a carpenter. I'm a doctor, not a you know, whatever. You'll find me saying I'm a vicar, not a computer tech person. So I've been trying to set it up. But anyway, are we ready now, Rhiannon? Right, here we are. Let's watch our clip. Probably stop it there, Rihanna. There we are, stop it there, because we've had the catchphrase. I can he change the laws of physics, Captain. Well, Scotty can't change the laws of physics, though he does have a jolly good go sometimes. But Jesus can. Can you think of other times Jesus changed the laws of physics? Think of some of his miracles. Water into wine. Bringing people back to life. And then uh, Christ's fig tree and the miracles. Yeah, the withering the fig tree. Yeah. What about the miracle he's just done before this one? Feeding the five thousand. Because it wasn't just that he fed all those people with five loaves and two fishes. There were twelve baskets of leftovers. You know that breaks the laws of physics, doesn't it? You can't have leftover more than you started with. So Jesus is in the business of breaking the laws of physics. That's because he was the one who created them. And sometimes people look at the miracles and they try to explain them away. They might say, oh, oh yes, well, of course, Jesus was walking on a sandbank, you know. <laughs> or, or it was a trick of the light. If you, if you Google walking on water, you'll find lots of pictures of illusions where people look like they are actually walking on the water. The illusion illusionist dynamo famously faked it but you know these all take place on still water or just gently rippling don't forget jesus is in a storm this is no trick of the eye jesus created the laws of physics and he can control them just let that thought sink in for a moment jesus isn't a teacher with wise words, he's the Lord of creation. That alone should encourage us. J.C. Ryle, the great uh, 19th century bishop of Liverpool, who I love to quote, says this. I'm going to put the quote up there. It might be too small for you to, to see. Well, this is what he says. There is encouragement here for all true Christians. Let them know that there is nothing created which is not under Christ's control. All things serve him. He may allow his people to be tried for a season and to be tossed to and fro by storms of trouble. He may be later than they wish in coming to their aid and not draw near till the fourth watch of the night. But never let them forget 
that winds and waves and storms are all Christ's servants. They cannot move without Christ's permission. Wow, isn't it? Isn't that wonderful to remember? That's who Jesus is. Don't make your Jesus too small. Don't make him just your friend because you, you take the power away. He is your friend, but he's also the Lord of creation. Awesome in power. I'm just going to pray just for a moment and then we're going to sing. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus, our Lord. Thank you that he is awesome in power, that he's the Lord of creation. Thank you that the winds and the waves move at his command. Thank you that he is Lord even over the laws of physics, and the laws of nature. Oh, thank you for our Jesus. Help us to trust in him more and more. Well, we're going to sing. We're going to sing a song that we sang at the last Together service. It was new to many at the last Together, so I thought we might do it again at this one. Jesus is greater than the greatest hero. So it's got uh, uh, actions to it. So Jesus is greater than the greatest hero. Jesus is closer than the closest friend. He came from heaven and he died to save us, to show us love that never ends. Um, King of King and the Lord of Glories. He's the light following his way. He's the truth that you can believe in. He's alive. He's living today. Let's stand and sing it. sit down. I wonder how brave you're feeling this morning. I wonder if anybody's brave enough to come and take part in a little game. It needs to be a grown-up for this, but um, most of you will be uh, aware of the uh, the radio game, Just a Minute. Yeah? Have I got a couple of volunteers who'd like to participate? Go on, who's willing to have a go? Right, well, this is what you've got to let me tell you where it is. You're too, you're too young, Nicola. Sorry. <laughs> right, basically, in just a minute, you have to speak for a minute, or at least try to, on a, a topic without hesitation, deviation, or repetition. And what you do is, there's several of you, 
and uh, I'll give you a topic and the first person starts but if they hesitate, deviate or repeat then uh, they get called out and the next person picks up and talks on it um, and if they mess up the next person it goes back again and the person who's still finishing when the timer goes for a minute is the winner. Well, on that topic, on that topic. it's got, so, so if, if, you, if you don't talk on that topic, you get done for deviation. If you do an erm, that's hesitation. If you repeat yourself, that's obviously repetition. It, but who's your hand up there, Lynette? <laughs> right, so we've got Lynette. Who else? And Bernie. Have we got a third one? Sai, all right. Do you want to come to the front then, guys? Um, so all of you have got, have got to say if you think they've, so just shout out if you think they've deviated. So if you just sort of stand in front, you won't be on the film actually, because we're not moving the thing today. Darren, could you time on your phone? Have you got your phone there? Could you time the minute? Because it will save, it'll I mean I can concentrate on other things without looking. But you have to press pause. Yeah. When, when somebody's called out, you press pause and then you say how long the next person's got to go. Yeah? <laughs> ready to go? I am ready to go. Yes. <laughs> right, okay. So look that way. So look out to them because they're going to be the ones who... You can also call out one another, but guys, you can call them out from the floor as well. Okay. Okay, so our, our topic, first topic is um, for you, Lynette, starting now, summer weather. I think we've got repetition of do you? <laughs> oh, you're not allowed to say that. So no, no. How many, how many seconds? 30 seconds left. On summer weather, Bernie. Summer weather. What can we say about summer weather? This summer, the ground is like a quad. Camping, go four times a week camping. Oh, repetition of camping. <laughs> <laughs> right. How long has I got? 23 seconds, 23 seconds size, summer weather. <laughs> summer weather, the thing everybody talks about. They love us, go further than anything else. You put on your summer dress, oh, that one is fine. You get a winter clothes, you put it in the summer. So we'll go for a walk in the forest or on the road. We're going to uh, fish on tea. <laughs> You can you can repeat the words that's in the the title, so you can say summer more than once. Yeah, you can challenge. Yeah, no, no, it's you. So it doesn't it doesn't matter if the previous person has said Wellingtons. You can say Wellingtons, but you can. Anyway, it's back to you, Lynette. How many seconds? Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> Church. 
you walk through the doors, you come in here every day, there's activity for everybody, every member of the family, be it the father, the mother, the daughter, the child, the, even the little toddlers. On Monday, you come to the parents and toddler group where everybody is rolling on the floor playing. On Tuesday, you come for Bible studies. Wednesday, we have prayer parties and singing. <laughs> concentrate and to, to not go um, um, um in the middle. You did really, really well, all three of you. The joy on faces when they were talking with us. And <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely brilliant. Oh, so great focus. But of course, that's not always the case, as we thought of at the beginning. Sometimes we can get distracted. I'm going to read you the next bit from our Bible reading. Matthew 14, 28 to 33. The next bit of the story. So Jesus has, uh, has, has cried out to the disciples. Right? That's verse 27. Take courage, it's I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? When they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. And of course, the disciples were terrified, weren't they? They know that people don't walk on the water, especially during a storm. And so they've drawn the only possible conclusion in that situation, really, that this is a ghost, it's an apparition coming at them. But Jesus steps in, doesn't he? Verse 27, take courage, it's I, don't be afraid. They don't need to be afraid of anything when Jesus is there alongside them. And neither do we. But the disciples still need a little bit more convincing. So Peter, as ever, is the one to speak up, isn't he? Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Now, it's quite a, a bold request, isn't it? Tell me to come out to you on the water. Either Peter's got a lot of faith, or he's being a little bit foolhardy because Jesus says, come on. <laughs> That's a real test of trust now, isn't it? Because it's one thing for Peter to say, yeah, tell me to come out on the water, Lord. But it's quite another to actually get out of the boat and take those steps. The water's were ferocious it was stormy the boat was tossed to and fro but a sign of true faith is not just recognizing that something is true or real yes lord i believe you're the lord it's actually acting on that belief peter can only step out of that boat because he knows it's jesus and all the while he keeps his eyes on jesus then he can walk steadily <coughs> towards him. But then Peter notices the wind. It's not like he didn't know the wind was there. They've been battling the wind all night. But suddenly the wind has become bigger than Jesus. And his eyes are on the wind or its effects instead. And isn't that what we do with our problems? We're going along okay with Jesus and then suddenly a problem or something we're facing comes along and it seems so much bigger than Jesus is. And we focus on that thing instead.
heads. We look at that problem, that circumstance. We play all the different possibilities over in our minds, night after night. And that is when we begin to sink. And Peter starts to slip beneath the waves. But then he cries out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And that's a cry that Jesus never fails to answer. And it's the cry each of us needs to make. Not so much when things aren't going our way, but at that moment when we realise that nothing or nobody else can save us apart from Jesus. Not money or career or relationship or new hobby, only Jesus. When we know that without him we're lost, then we make the true cry from the heart, Lord, save me. And Jesus answers. Peter was about to die in the water. But as soon as he cries out, immediately Jesus reaches out his hands and catches him. And Jesus will catch us when we call to him. That's who Jesus is. He's got the power to do it. He's Lord of creation. He controls the laws of physics. He has the compassion to do it because he's promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So let's pray. Oh, Father God, thank you so much for this wonderful reminder of Jesus. Thank you that all we need to do is to call on his name and you will save us. Oh, Father, help each one of us to call out to you in our troubles, in our worries, in our anxieties. And Father, if there's anybody who's not yet made that very first call for you to save them, to be their Lord, I pray, Father, that they would make that call right now. They would cry out to you, Lord, save me. And know from that moment that they are snatched out of the boiling, raging torrent and into the safety and peace of your presence. Oh, thank you, Father, for that wonderful privilege. Help us never to be so distracted that we lose sight of our Lord Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing our next song this morning. Jesus is Lord. We sang this last Sunday at the end of the service, if you remember. Jesus is Lord, the cry that echoes through creation.
Do be seated. Well, in your boxes, you should have an envelope that says for the prayers. And in that envelope, you should have some little cards. On one side, we've got Jesus walking on the water. On the other side, we've got Peter sinking beneath the waves. So we're going to use these for our prayers. Um, on, the, on the Jesus side... Um, I'd like you to think about um, some things you'd like to thank Jesus for. So maybe for his, his power, his awesomeness. All those different things we've been thinking about Jesus today in our service. So maybe write those words around Jesus or we can write a longer prayer if you wish. And on the other side, well that's, that's there to think about the things which, which distract you. The things which sometimes are bigger to you than... Jesus is. For Peter, he was sinking in the waves. Makes me think of the old Sunday school song, Peter who was sinking in the waves. Um, but think about those things which are bigger than Jesus to you and ask him to help you to overcome those things with his strength, to fix your eyes onto to Jesus instead of those problems. So that's the two sides, praise, and the other side, the things that sometimes seem bigger to you than Jesus to ask him to help you to uh, overcome them. Or you could even just write a prayer of, Lord, save me, if that's what's on your heart this morning. If that's what you want to say, Lord, save me, then just put that on your card. I'm not going to take them in. You can take them um, home with you and add them, add things to it during the week if you'd like. spare ones here if you wanted to, an extra one you could just have one as a reminder Jesus saying on the one side uh, take courage it's I don't be afraid and on the other side Lord save me I've got, uh, I've got spare ones if anybody wants uh, a spare
I'm going to say a prayer. Um, I'll leave a little gap in each one so you can um, say, you don't have to say it out loud, you can say it quietly in your heart, some of those things that you've put on your card. Our dear Father, thank you that Jesus says, it's I, don't be afraid. Thank you that Jesus is powerful, awesome, the Lord of creation. Thank you that Jesus is. And we cry out to you, Lord, save us. Save us from the things which seem bigger than you are. Save us from. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Of course, uh, Jesus um, says to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? But of course, Jesus doesn't say, Peter, you had no faith. He says you had little faith. And you know, even a little bit of faith in a big God means that we can do wonderful things with him. Well, let's... Uh, well, let's have our notices before we have our next hymn. So uh, our notices today, uh, one big one is the, um, a, a church group called Everlasting Ministries have, uh, have taken over what used to be Roos Village Church and um, have asked us to join in a sort of a mission event so on a fun day next Sunday between two and six. It is quite short notice um, for somebody like me who likes to plan months in, in advance. But it's a really good opportunity to reach people um, in our community. It's going to be on the, the fields by the Celtic Way um, Community um, Centre. So I've got some flyers there. If you're able to, to deliver some of those flyers to, um, to a street or streets in Roos, we'd be really grateful. Now, we haven't got like the list like we have at Christmas with the Christmas cards. Um, they've, they've said they'll do round the Celtic Way. So if you live down there, they're going to do that side. But if we, if we can do as much as we can manage of the village and the point, um, then, then that would be fantastic. So there's just a stack of flyers on the table at the back and just a list. So if you're able to deliver some flyers this week, um, just put your name and just put which streets you're going to do. And, and we'll just do what we can because it is, it is sort of quite last minute. I only got the flyers on Friday from them um, but if you can help on the day as well I've said I'll do a little craft table as is my usual um, if anyone else would help me on the craft table or just come and uh, be there to talk to people um, that would be really really brilliant so uh, so the blue flyers are on the table at the back lots of the other stuff was in the notices that I emailed out to you about the the food bank that will be starting here soon we'll have more details on that um, to come um, anything else I need to announce? And next Sunday our service uh, will be a little bit different because we've got a baptism in the service. So do do please um, especially welcome the, the people who will be coming for that. Um, it's a great opportunity to show them um, what it's like to be uh, part of the church family here at St Peter's. We've had a, a wonderful rave reviews this morning from those of you who did just, just a minute. And it'd be great to show that to the folk who are, who are coming as well. So, so please come with that as a priority um, next Sunday to give a really big welcome um, to Ethan and his family. And I've got bands of marriage. So I published the bands of marriage between Daniel Ian Michael Jones and Ellen Louise Moores, both of this parish. If any of you 
you know, is cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is the second time of asking. Father, we thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you that, uh, oh, I've forgotten his name already. It was Daniel, wasn't it? Daniel. I'm not doing this wedding. It's taking place in the uh, Church of the Rares in Ely. Um, Daniel and Ellen would have a, a wonderful time as they prepare for their marriage and that you would grant them a lifelong happy marriage together. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Any birthdays? Oh, excellent. August, we have loads of birthdays in, in August. Yours is coming up. Yours is next, Sash. We do you next week or this week? Do it next week. Let <laughs> <laughs> me celebrate it first. <laughs> Just John, anybody else? Let's sing happy birthday to John then. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Ray. Hip hip. Ray. Hip hip. Ray. You're very welcome. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> well, let's stand and sing our final hymn before the throne of God. Dear Father, we thank you so much for all the things you've taught us this morning, the reminder you've given us about Jesus, our Saviour and our Lord. And so we pray that you'd help us to go out into the world this week, taking that knowledge and that love with us, that we might share it with those who we meet, that through the things you've done in our lives, you might change their lives too. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with each one of you, now and always. Amen. Amen.